Well, you guys, today we're taking a look at how to flash your BIOS without a CPU, RAM, or even a graphics card. We're going to take a look at flashing this BIOS on this motherboard here. This is an MSI Mac V550M Bazooka motherboard. You can do this for any motherboard as long as it supports the flash BIOS button that is included on your motherboard. You can see it right here. Now, this is a pretty budget board, but if you've got one of these boards that have this button on it, you'll be able to use this feature to flash the BIOS. Now, this feature is very useful for system builders that like to build PCs on a regular basis. This makes the process a lot easier. And I'm going to show you uh, some of the key steps to using the flash BIOS button in this video. So some of the main reasons are the BIOS flash button is a special feature that lets you flash the BIOS without having a CPU, RAM or video card installed on the computer. The main reason for doing this is if the new CPU was not supported by the existing BIOS version on that motherboard. You will need a computer to download the BIOS. You will need a USB flash drive and formatted it to FAT32 and you will need a power supply to complete this task. So we're going to need to connect the 24 pin and the 8 pin connectors to the motherboard. So you're going to need your power supply at this stage. Doesn't really matter what power supply. Just go ahead and get the 24 pin cable and plug it into the motherboard. And once you've got that plugged in, you can go ahead and plug in the 8 pin power connector for the CPU there into the motherboard as well. So once we've got this all done, uh, we're going to need a USB flash drive and we're going to need to format that to FAT32 and then we can download our uh, file from our motherboard manufacturer and download the BIOS update for this uh, motherboard. So this is the actual motherboard here. Now it doesn't really matter what make of uh, MSI motherboard you're going to be using here. You can do this method as long as it supports the BIOS flash button method here. So we've got the USB flash drive here. This is just a, a SanDisk which you can get. It's a 32 gigabyte one and we need to uh, format this to FAT32. So I'm going to go over to a working computer and go to Google and type in the make and model number of our motherboard. So this is an MSI uh, Bazooka motherboard. It's a B550M. So I'm just going to do that search here and click on it. And it should be the top link up here, which is the MSI link here. Click on this one and we should then open this up here, be able to get our BIOS. Once you've got the page open here, we're going to go over to our support area, which is on the top right hand side on this page here. You can also check out the specifications of your motherboard here if you're not sure whether it supports the uh, BIOS flash button here. Now, once we're in here, we're going to go to the BIOS section here and we're going to download the latest BIOS for our motherboard. Now, whether you download, if there is a, a, a beta BIOS there and you want to use that, you can do. I don't like using beta BIOSes, but I'll use the very latest BIOS for that motherboard. So let's go ahead and download uh, that BIOS here. That does give you the version number here and you can check inside your BIOS and it will tell you what version you have in your BIOS. You can also check on your PC to find out what version you're running. But if you do need to flash the BIOS for any reason, this is where you'll get your BIOS file from. So let's go ahead and download this onto our computer here. Got this downloaded, it's a zip file, so we'll need to extract that. So next up, what I'm going to do here is go over uh, to our flash drive and get that ready to accept our uh, BIOS uh, file here. So let's go over to our flash drive. I'm going to right click this and we need to format this to FAT32. So let's go ahead, right click format. And in the file system here, make sure you've got it FAT32. So you're probably going to need a smaller uh, USB flash drive to uh, do this. Otherwise, you're going to end up having to partition that drive, which you don't really want to do. So just get a small uh, flash drive. Once we've got that done, we've now got this set. And what we can do now is extract our file and put it onto our USB flash drive. So we're going to go over to our downloaded section where we downloaded our file. You should see a folder in here. Open this up and there'll be two files in here, text file and another file in here, which is our BIOS. So we can uh, drag and drop that over to our computer. And that's now done. It's now going over to our USB flash drive. And once we've got that on there, we can now uh, rename this file. Let me quickly just show you here. If you're not familiar with flashing your BIOS, you can always go back to the website here and go to manual and take a look at the manual section here. Download and open up the manual. 
and it will tell you basically how to flash your BIOS. It will give you all the information you need about flashing your BIOS for that motherboard. And it will tell you in here uh, what you're trying to do here. So you can see here, updating a BIOS or with the flash button, and it tells you that it needs to be msi.rom. So you need to make sure you name it that. And that's what MSI are telling you to do right there. So let's go back over to our USB flash drive and rename this file. So what we're going to do is make sure that we can see extensions. So go up to a view here and we're going to go to options and change folder options and go to view tab and make sure you have got the tick remove from hide file extensions here. And this means that when we rename it, it will then turn into a .rom file. So rename the file, highlight the whole lot and delete it or just rename it and call it msi.rom. That's exactly what they're telling you to do in their manual. So say yes, and you should now see the type of file has now turned to a ROM file, and that's exactly what we need to flash our BIOS. So with that done, we can now head back over to our motherboard. We've got our USB flash drive here. It's ready to go. And on this board, you're going to need to make sure you populate the correct uh, USB port here. In this case, it's this USB 2.0 port on the back of the board here, and it needs to be this one here that you're plugging it into. Now you can push the uh, flash button here to flash the bars, and you should see a little LED light starting to flash. And we are now getting the power supply powering up and spinning the fan. That means it's working. Now at this stage, do not turn off the PC. Just let it do its thing. And if there's any other sort of LEDs on the board, you will see them flashing as well. Now, the important part here, like I said, is do not power off the PC too soon because you will brick your motherboard and you don't want to be doing that. So just let it do its thing. The light is flashing away here. It will speed up and start flashing fast. That means it's flashing and you just need to be patient. It takes about five minutes to complete this process. You will see the fan on the PSU spinning up here, so don't worry about that. That's pretty normal. So how would you know this process is complete? This is the risky part with this process, but if you keep an eye on it, I would advise you to stay near the motherboard and keep an eye on it. You will see that LED light go off, and the power supply will switch off, and it will come back on, and it will go back off again. And that's exactly what happens right there. So once the LED light stops flashing, that means the process has been completed. The fan on the PSU may still continue to spin, but the LED light has now been switched off, and that means the process is now completed. You can now turn off the power supply safely, and you can also then remove the USB flash drive and then continue on with your build. You can also add at this stage your uh, CPU, your RAM, and also your GPU, and obviously then test the motherboard itself with a display if you want to do that before you build your PC, which I'd advise you to do at this stage. If something's gone wrong and it's not worked, you can always go back to an older version of a BIOS and reflash it by using the same method, okay? But you can see here, this has gone off now. I'm gonna turn the power supply off and remove the USB flash drive from the motherboard. Now, obviously the process is pretty simple, but again, it's a little bit more complicated because you can't see any display on the screen. And some people may find that a little bit daunting. As long as you don't pull out that flash drive before it's completed its process, then you should be okay. But if it's halfway through uh, the uh, writing process and you pull it out, then it's not going to be able to complete and you will end up bricking your motherboard. So you've got to be very careful when you do things like that. Just let it finish and be patient and you should be good to go after that. Now, remember, only use this process if your CPU was not supported with the existing BIOS or motherboard, and you can then use this method to flash it to accept that uh, CPU, okay? Otherwise, you can use the normal standard method of flashing the BIOS. Anyway, I hope this one's been useful to you. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. A big shout out to all my YouTube members who join my YouTube members group. I really do appreciate the support. Bye for now.